Rishi Sunak, the richest MP in Parliament, is offering you a £200 loan when your energy bills will be increasing by nearly £700. He is taking the piss. He has absolutely no idea what it's going to be like for ordinary people during this cost of living crisis. He went to an exclusive private school, then went to Oxford, had a career in banking before coming to Parliament. He's pushing through all of these policies that are disproportionately hitting working people while he doesn't have to suffer the consequences at all, nor his friends and colleagues. This government likes to talk about levelling up. Level up. Levelling up. Level up. So level up. Level up. Level up. Terrific. Brilliant. We're levelling up. That's Leveled it. up. <laughs> How many times are you going to say this? When in truth, we currently have over 5 million children in poverty. Last month, over a million adults went a day without eating because they couldn't afford to put food on the table. Don't believe their lies on levelling up. They're busy punching down. If we think things are bad, they are going to get a whole load worse. When inflation rises and wages don't rise at the same rate, your purchasing power decreases. So what you were able to buy today for the same amount, you will not be able to buy tomorrow. The Bank of England CEO has told workers that they shouldn't be asking for pay rises during a cost of living crisis. We do need to see in a moderation of wage rises. This is a guy who is on half a million himself. This just tells you how the very wealthy in our society are completely out of touch. Kirsty Olsop is giving advice to young people that they'll be able to get on the property ladder if they just cancel their Netflix subscription, if they had less coffee and didn't go to the gym. This is not taking into account that young people have student debt, that they are paying a third to half of their salary to their landlord and that wages simply aren't good enough. And this is a woman who comes from a very privileged background. She's the daughter of a baron. And when she bought her first home, they were on average around 50,000 pounds and that's definitely not the case anymore. I will pay as little as I possibly can on principle. So Kirsty, use your privileged status and platform to lobby the government to address the issues facing young people rather than giving advice that's really not rooted in reality. Nadim Zahawi said that a windfall tax on energy companies would be wrong because they're struggling. A windfall tax on oil and gas companies that are already struggling in the North Sea is never going to cut it. The same Nadim Zahawi, who was paid £1.3 million by an oil company while being an MP. Shell announced profits of £12 billion and BP's profits were announced as £9.5 billion. Their CEOs are laughing while making profits at the expense of ordinary people. We will have a lot of free cash flow to play with to continue to return to investors, which I think is going to be the priority for 2022. Shell is also a company that paid absolutely no tax in the UK last year while getting government rebates of £100 million. In fact, together they netted £2.4 billion in tax rebates since 2016. A windfall tax would address that. Energy prices are rising by 54% in this country, whereas across the channel in France, they will see an increase of 4%. The key difference is that the largest energy provider in France has a majority shareholder, which is the French government. Things can be done differently. It simply takes political will. I've been accused of class warfare and the left is often accused of being obsessed with class politics. But the truth is that there isn't a party that embodies class politics more than the Tories. This is a party led by an old Latonian. It has a chancellor that is the wealthiest MP in parliament. Two thirds of its cabinet are privately educated and it is funded by one third of UK billionaires. They are serving the interests of their class and that's why they're more than happy to give a billion pounds in a tax giveaway to bankers while at the same time slashing social security and pensions by 4%. That is Tory class war. The conditions of all workers are under attack. If you work in the public sector, you haven't seen a pay rise in years. And if you work in the private sector, your work is often insecure and precarious. And if you're out of work, if you're sick or you're disabled, the safety net has been destroyed. Throughout history, the working class has often been divided and pitted against each other. The truth is we have to unify against those who are attacking all of us. We can't look at the fact that there are a record number of billionaires in this country in isolation with the fact that we have more food banks and McDonald's restaurants. These two things are directly linked when we have people with excessive wealth 
then we are going to have so much poverty. The cost of living crisis is not just numbers or statistics, it's people who can't afford to heat their homes. It's children who go to sleep hungry at night. We run out of bread and stuff to go in sandwiches. So if we don't have money, we can't like buy that stuff for lunch. But it doesn't have to be this way. Instead of hiking national insurance, which will hit the poorest workers the hardest, we could tax wealth of more than 100 million pounds, which will generate 69 billion that can fund our NHS and that can make sure not a single child goes hungry. The cost of living crisis isn't inevitable. It isn't a natural disaster. It's because of political choices and this government is not on your side. The press is run by a handful of elites, so they're not going to be telling you the truth of what is happening in our communities, like the cost of living crisis. That's why Double Down News is so important, so please support alternative media like Double Down News and give money to their patron.